So at this point, if all is good, you should have something that looks like this on your desktop. Okay, if you, if you don't, it's okay now because I'm not going to ask you to shut down your lids because that would be a very bad idea. But I will continue with the lecture and then soon we're actually going to do something else. Uh, there are other ways uh, to do this. There are many ways. So what are we going to do next? So we're going to we're going to talk about getting data in and out of Galaxy, doing operations in Galaxy, understanding the user interface, linking multiple steps into a pipeline, um, and doing sort of standard bioinformatics as well as next-gen sequencing bioinformatics, and sharing these. So there's this lab that's a separate two-pager that's in your handout. Um, and what we're going to do right now, actually, I sort of anticipated this. We're actually going to use the public version of Galaxy because what we're doing is very, we're not doing next gen stuff first. Sorry to disappoint you. We're going to start easy. I'm starting you easy. So we're going to use Galaxy. So set up a separate tab, different browser, whatever you like, but a separate tab and type in usegalaxy.org. And we're going to do this lab here, which is basically from Open Helix which is a company that does, uh, for which actually is contracted by um, UCSC to put out these uh, free tutorials out. So we kindly, uh, I'm acknowledging them and I'm using one of their things. And we're gonna get data out of Galaxy. So what you have to do first is um, type in usegalaxy.org into a new browser window. Don't touch your, your Amazon one. Leave that one going. Leave it up. It's, it's, what we're doing is not going to affect that, but it's just going to warm us up on, on using Galaxy. So that later on when Emily has you doing really, really complicated stuff, it'll be very easy. Because it will get, it will get complicated. I, war I kid you not. Okay, so everybody should have this page, and if you click on Get Data, so there's also, I don't have it with me here, but in the binder, there is, so what we're doing is these two pages in the binder. Uh, after the lecture, and we're going to basically do go through this. So, what's on the screen and what's on here is not quite the same because this is a, a, an old handout. Some some of the version numbers and uh, and the numbers might be different, but the operation are exactly the same. So, we're going to start with page one, which is the second page of page one, and we're going to go through this. I'm going to go through it on the screen here. I can go through it live on my machine as well. And we're just going to follow what's on here. Okay, so the actual operation we're doing right now is, is a little simple-minded, but it's just to go through the mechanics of working on Galaxy. And, and what we're doing is basically the same for, for all things. So if you look at this, the first page says, uh, go to the Galaxy site, which we did. Actually, usegalaxy.org is the same as what they wrote there. Uh, galaxy.psu.edu is the same place. Uh, get data and then go to click on USC main. So we're going to get data and the second item is UCSC main and then lo and behold we have the UCSC browser that shows up. Let's see if I can make this so it fits in the screen and it's legible. Okay. Ah, get away. Okay. So by default, yeah, so it actually looks a lot better than on the on the big screen than on my monitor. 
So by default, it's human, which is what we want. It's um, the HG19, which is also what we want. It's also uh, it's the group. It's actually not the group we want. So we don't want gene and gene prediction. We want variations and repeats. So what we're doing is we're going to go look for the SNPs related to a specific gene. Okay. So we want variation, SNPs, variation. You know, that mem shows. Um, and then we want it for the gene we want is BRCA1, BRCA1. So we're going to go, it's not that position, so we're going to type in the, the name, the gene name, BRCA1. We're all going to type in the same gene. Okay, this is not the part of the lab where you go type in your own favorite gene. Okay, not now. Later, but not now. And then what we're going to do, so we have BRCA1, and we're going to do lookup. So now we're running Galaxy in Pennsylvania, right? We're not, it's not the cloud one, it's, it's, uh, it's, so what it does, if you look, go look at this whole page, it is, BRCA1 is multiple copies of it, multiple variants, and there's RefSeq gene, and there's non-human genes, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm going to make this very simple for you. Just take the first one of the first at the top of the list, okay? So all, everybody clicks on the chromosome 17 interval there. And once you do that, then you should come you should see what it what it does. So by doing the typing in the G name and doing a lookup, it got you the coordinates of that gene. So it now knows chromosome 17, which is uh, 41,243,452 up to 41,077,500. So it has, that's the coordinate for that gene. I bet you that that doesn't include the promoter, but that's another... <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. Okay? And so the folks at USC and the folks at Galaxy are actually... All right, did I hit the second one? Oh, journal club, missing journal club. <laughs> uh, huh? Okay, actually it doesn't really matter. Your numbers will be different, but let me, do so you want me to do it again? Okay. You don't trust me, I mean, that's okay. BRCA1. Look up. So I hit the first one because the first one. So if you hit the first 500 versus 468, which one is yours? Anyway, I'm going to click on the first one again. And so you get an interval for that gene. And then I'm going to get output. So this button here, click on this. And then you get this window, and here I'm going to say send query to Galaxy. So the first, the reason I know this, so if I go back, I'm going to go back a screen, is that up here I told it to send it to Gal that I'm send output to Galaxy. So UCSC and Galaxy folks, they're they're talking nice to each other. So whenever you want to send the data to Galaxy, it knows that this query came from within Galaxy, so it's going to send it back to Galaxy. Right? Normally, when you go to the UCSC browser, it doesn't say send the data to Galaxy because you're not on Galaxy. You're just using the UCSC browser. So I'm going to get output, and I'm just going to leave things as is. I'm just going to get send query to Galaxy. So this is going to, so a green box is a good thing. So if it's green, it's good. Red is not good. Okay. And right now, my box on the right is grayed out. That's not good either. And so basically, there's a little clock here saying it's waiting to start, okay? And then once it's running, it's yellow. And once it's done, it turns green. So right now, it's still waiting. So that's not a good sign. One thing I can do while it's doing that, so the, the eye is to see. And it's ah, yellow. That's good. I like yellow. So now it's running. And so instead of a little clock, it's got a little tumbling thing. Okay, 
and and now green even better so it's now finished so the eye here is to look at it so if I click on the eye I see the output here's my data output in the middle pane like I told you before it would be and so it's chromosome position in all these intervals so 4, 1, 2, 4, 9, 3, 6, 3, and 3, 6, 4. So they're all one nucleotide intervals. They all have an RS number. That's a SNP number, DB SNP number. They all have a zero here, which doesn't mean anything. They all have a plus or minus here, which tells you the plus or minus strand. Okay? What was the zero? It's, a, it's, a, it's an empty column. They stuck zeros in them. It doesn't mean anything. So don't worry about it. It's, everything's got zero. So, so this is the output. So the name of the query or the, the results file is this name here. So you can also click on it once. And when you click on it once, it gives you the first five lines and the first and all the columns. And sometimes it actually has, so it knows the file format. So it knows that column one is chromosome number, column two is start, column three is end. Uh, column four is name, column five is nothing, and column six is strand. So you get that information on here. So if you click on here, it disappears. It, the little pencil here next to the eye, click on that, and then this gives you the opportunity of renaming the, your file. So instead of having this long use CSC main blah blah blah, I'm going to call this BRCA1 space SNP S. Oh yeah, that's not good. Thank you. One. BRCA1 snip. And then I do, I go scroll down and I hit save. So now if I click on that, so I have BRCA1 snip, that's my name that I gave it. I could delete it if I wanted. There's a pencil and there's the eye to look at it. So if I want to click on it, the data hasn't changed. It's still the same data. If I click on it once, it also tells me I have 99 rows or regions or whatever, intervals, positions of one. Sorry. Yes? These are each, each, at each of these positions, there's a SNP on that, in that gene, yes. Most of them what? They're most, most of them are length 1, 47 to 48, 99 to 100, 65, 50, 66. SNPs could be more than one, but most of them are one. Sorry, which one? Not, not the zero. Zero is not, has nothing to do. Oh. So two, uh, this one's zero, yes. So that one, um, I don't know about that. It could be an insertion point, yeah. But I could look up, you can go into dbSNP if you're very curious. I'm not right now because <laughs> I'm in the middle of a class. We could go look up this RS number and, and you can find out. Okay? I encourage you to do that. The curious mind. And you can tell us, you report back to us what the answer is. So. So that, anyway, so we have a list of SNPs at that one, with one nucleotide. What we actually want, we want, we want to see the 50 nucleotides around this position, okay? So, next step, let's read our instructions. Uh, bracket one is it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, tell hyperlink. Okay, so one thing you can do also, this is a note-taking uh, good thing to do is uh, uh, history. Oh, what did I forget to do? I forgot to log in because I was trying to write down so to, I could remember in my history, but since I'm not logged in, it's not going to remember my history. So, so here we're on the um, UCSC public server. So most of you who are new to Galaxy have never logged in here. So you'll have to register. I've logged in before, so I'm just going to log in. But I think register is, is pretty fast. So 
Um, if you've registered before, wrong password. Remember. So now, if you click on the user, it knows who you are. So registration is a, I think you, you register right away, right? It does, right? OK, good. I, it's been such a long time. OK, so now, yes. So you have unnamed history. You can click on that. And what we're going to call this is we're going to, um, we're going to call it Gene Flanks. And if we were so enthused, uh, we're also going to add some tags. We're going to say snips of uh, BRCA1. So I got a couple of tags. So if I'm looking for them later, I, I, have, I have things to, to go look, them, look for them. So I have uh, oh, unnamed history, didn't remember it. Gene Flanks. Return. There we go. So now, um, so we actually finished part one, do part two. If you've logged out, which we haven't done, blah, blah, blah. Operate. So we're going to operate on genomic intervals. So actually, let me see. If, let me make sure. Uh, so we're going to we're going to get. So you have to find operate on genetic interval here, but the shortcut here is you have this search window. So I'm just going to type in flanks. And actually. Uh, it's, there it goes. It's, it pops it right up to, so it's really easy to find. So there's so many tools on the sidebar, and instead of finding them, um, bye, Michael. See you, uh, see you soon. Have a safe trip home. Thank you very much. Thank you. So operate on genomic interval. Click on that. Oops. Oh, sorry, get flanks. And uh, so if you type in on the, on the side, so hide toolbox, show toolbox, or show tool, search tools. So if it doesn't show, then you have to click this little round thing to, to show it. And then I just typed in flanks. And then it's get flanks is what I was looking for. And so Galaxy is really smart. It's already guessing which file. I've lost you? OK. So right now, we're going to get the flanks of this one position on that file that we have. So get flanks is in one of our tools. It's in the operate on genomic. So let me do it the other way. Are you following in this open source tutorial? Yes, I am. I'm on page two. What step? Page three. The uh, step two. First, get the flanking region of the SNP in the left tool column, cling in the heading, operate. So I just showed you a trick, which is not in the tutorial, so, which was to I just look for the word flanks. But if you don't want to do that, you can look for the word operate on genomic intervals. Operate on genomic, right here it is. And then in, within that, there's get flanks, and then you click on that. And then it's, that shows up in the middle, the get flanks. Yes? The what? The active Galaxy button. The what? The active Galaxy button. So, OK, actually, that's, that's a good break. to Let's go look on, into that right now. So. Uh, I'm in Firefox. I think it's supposed to be. So if you come back to this window, everybody, 
So this window, so this access galaxy should be dark. So who has a grayed out access galaxy? One, two, three. Okay. Oh, well, a few more. Okay, keep your hand up just so I have a... You, okay, you know of a problem. Oh, some people started again. Oh, we oh, we've run out of volumes. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so we've run into a problem. See, this is. Okay, so this doesn't affect the other lab that we're doing right now, but it will affect other labs. So for that other part, what we'll have to do is we'll have to team up. I'm sorry. So you'll have to find somebody that has a working cloud man version of Galaxy and you'll have to work with them. Okay? Sorry about that. We have to get more volumes next time. <laughs> so how many? How much volume did we have? We had 144. Oh, yeah. Take some notes. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this one here. So essentially, they're following the open source guidelines. Don't necessarily. It, I would prefer if they followed me, unless they want to go faster than me. But some people are having a hard time. Okay, well then I'd like to hear about it. What? Where are they? So where are they stuck? Which position? Um, loading data. Loading data. Okay. So they had to go back. They had to go back after they went through. Yeah. So let's. So if we start from the beginning. So I'm going to start from scratch. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to clear. I'm going to delete uh, everything. And I'm going to start from zero. So I have nothing. So. So I'm going to get data. I'm going to use CSU main, which is the second uh, thing under get data. Oh, what did I forget to do? I forgot to log in. I'm already logged in. Are you logged in? Is everybody logged in? Somebody not logged in? Huh? No, no, that's it. But if you don't have another account, it says, uh, what does it say? It says, uh, register. If you're not logged in, then you register. If you don't, it's a login, register, register. You put in your email and your name and a password. Right? So then you're logged in. And then... Um, we're, we're using usegalaxy.org. Right? We're not on the cloud. We're um, table. So the, the manual says SNP 130 or something like that. We, we're using 135 because that's what is the most recent one. The group we're looking for that's important here is, is this variation and repeats. And over here, you highlight this, you delete what's there. And you type in BRCA1, B R C A1, and I do a lookup. And then, so it does UCSC, does a lookup for the gene name BRCA1, and it's got BRCA1 is in multiple, multiple, it's a very common gene. A lot of people love that gene, lots of work done on that gene, and so it's present many times. For the simplicity of uh, the exercise, actually tells you to look for a specific one. We're going to avoid that part. We're just going to take the first one on the list. And if you hit the second one, that's okay. Uh, somebody people can't click, like Ian. <laughs> and then you get a numbers back. So the numbers you get back is the chromosome number and the interval of the gene you just selected. Okay? Once you've done that, then you get output. And then here again, you just send query to, you don't change anything. You just send, you know, I want the whole gene. I'm not saying I don't want the promoters and so forth. So I want the whole gene, and so I just send a query to Galaxy. And then you get this green box in the middle, which is good. 
So it sent the query off. And so now it's in the back end waiting to execute. And uh, it's gray right now, so it's not started yet. It's in queue to get processed. Yellow means it's running, and green means it's done. So instead of green, if you configured the query wrong or something like that, it came back red. And I, believe me, it will happen to you. It's happened to me. That means you did something wrong, and you have to go back and fix it. But the fact that you got a green box is a good thing. So the first thing you should do is you should, well, you can do first, a couple of things you can do first. One, you can look at it. And another one we can do is we can just change the text right away, like I suggested before, which was you highlight this whole thing and you say bracket, you rename it, bracket one, uh, snip, snips, it's plural. And then you hit the save button, which is uh, down here somewhere. There it is. Save. And what that does is just renames the file. So you can click on that. You see the first five or six lines. And it has a, an, on the black tab or black strip there, it actually has the names of all those lines. So it only has five or six here. And if you click on the I, you have the whole file, the whole output coming here. In this case, actually, the whole output is only 80 or 100 lines or what have you. So it actually shows you everything. But if the output was actually a million lines, it would just show you the first 100 or something like that. And it would warn you that this is only a part of it. I'm not showing you everything because the file's too big. But in this case, it's only 99. We've renamed it and so forth. So that's part one. Well, the other part about part one is you can change if you've logged in then you're able to actually name the history and we're going to name this history get flanks and I'm going to return that so it saved it then I'm going to add some um, uh, some tags this is not required but it just makes it easier later on if you're looking for things so snips is one tag Uh, another tag is uh, BRCA1. So I, I click somewhere else. So now I have two tags. I have a name of my history and I have one data file called BRCA1 snips. These are all the snips for that position uh, on chromosome 17 around the BRCA1 genes. Okay? So has everybody got that? Does anybody not have that? How did you save the history? The history are you are you logged in? Mm, I think so. I if you it's click it's on user, do you see your name logged in as? Yeah. I'm okay. So you are logged in. Yeah. So then on the on the blue on the sidebar on the blue bar there, uh -huh. it says some what does it say below the blue button? Okay, so click on that. And once you hit return, it'll oh. save. You have to return, yes. Okay, so, and what's the next part? Huh? So we're getting, what are we getting? flanks so there's two couple ways I, I showed you so one is show tool search and I just type in flanks oops if I can spell uh, so get flanks so I click on get flanks and then here according to step uh, Make sure I'm on the right page. Get flanks. Step three, change the location of flanking regions to both. So right now, downstream, upstream, both. I'm just going to click both. And everything else I leave the same. And then I do execute. Green box, a good thing. Brown box over here, not so good. It is waiting. What does both 
That means it's going to be 50 on, on, oh, on the either yeah. side. Yeah. Either side. I think it's either side. Uh, yeah, both sides. Yeah, 50 on either side. Not upstream or downstream, but on both sides. So it's got a low clock. It's waiting. Anybody's yellow or green here? Green? Okay, good. Ah, there we go. Yellow. And green. So I'm not going to rename it, but I can look at it. So now, if I look at the intervals here, so how long are these intervals? 50. Around on either side, so it's 50 surrounding. It's not 50 plus 50, but it's 50 in the middle, basically. So, next step. Uh, extract genomic DNA sequence. So we're done. Uh, fetch sequence. Click the tool. Extract genomic. So we do step four here. Fetch sequence. So we go. Let's go back to the menu here. Uh, so I'm going to click this away. So fetch sequences. Extract genomic DNA. Okay. Uh, and the thing here is I'm going to change not fast day, but I'm going to call it intervals. So that's an important thing to do here. So not there's two choices here: fast day or intervals. We're going to go with interval, which is basically a tab separated format. And then we execute. Again, so you're getting the hang of this, right? So, um, so here, so extract, output data type, interval, or fast day. So I don't want fast day, I want intervals. You see it? Right here. So over here on the left on the left panel you have to get fetch sequences and extract genomic DNA using uh, coordinate uh, from assembled or unassembled uh, genomes. Huh? To this one here? It's uh, so remove flanks. If you had typed flanks before you have to delete flanks. And then you have to scroll or you can type fetch. We can type extract, or you can scroll down to fetch sequences, extract, and so forth, and then execute. So mine executed. So if I look at it, so I now have those darn lower and upper cases. Same answer that uh, Malachi gave before, uh, repeats and, and non-repeats. But now I have... Um, also, I can move. I think I should be able to move this. Uh, there we go. Squeeze, squeeze this a little bit here. Squeeze this a little bit on this side. Come on. There we go. Yeah. So the RS number is what? Oh, they're repeated. So they may uh, as same coordinates. Oh yeah, segmental duplication. Except it's the same interval. Uh, oh no, it's so different intervals. So it could be part of a CNV. That's a good question. I actually don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, no, what upstream and downstream is, is for the, um, the, the DNA, so like to the left or to the right. Yeah. But do we have 26, 60, 10? Oh, they're all in pairs. You're right. I think maybe you're right. Yes, yes. I think you're right. I stand corrected. Yeah. It's actually 50 one way and 50 the other way. Yeah. 
So each one is, is yeah, they didn't tag them together. It's not 100, but it's 250 base pair region. Okay, good, good observation. So fetch DNA sequences, flank, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so yeah, so now we have, so it's in a tab delineated format, and if I look at, if I click on this one on the right here, let me put this back. Uh, make this bigger again. Sorry, so, so I have chromosome start and name, five is zero, it doesn't mean anything, strand, and seven is the sequence. It is not named, but basically it's the FASTA sequence. It's sort of the, sorry, not the FASTA sequence, the nucleotide sequence. Ah. No. I think I just killed, I did something. What did I just do? There we go. Okay. So. And then uh, the latest data set, blah, blah, extract DNA sequence. That's page three, turn to page four. And now we're going to actually repeat what we just did. But so this first, we're going to make sure that uh, step three, that all checkboxes. OK, so options, uh, history column, click extract workflow. So we're going to go, so you click on this, on the top dial here on the right, and extract workflow. You select that one. Everybody. So top right, that uh, gear thing there, extract workflow. Okay, so we're going to all do that now. Ah. Don't do as I, do as I say, not as I do. Let me start over. Extract workflow. Uh, okay. So basically, I got a gene from USCMA, I got the flanks, and I got the DNA sequences. So three steps. Um, type in the workflow name. So I'm going to call this one Get Flanks. No, I don't want to restart my computer. I'm just going to delete everything else. Workflow name. So I'm changing, I just changed the workflow name and I'm going to create a workflow. They're all checked. And I'm just going to create a workflow. So if I go look at workflow, so I have lots of workflows from various things, but the, the get flanks there, the top one, you should have that one. You shouldn't have all these other ones, especially if this is your first time. So once you've saved it, you have your workflow. Um, So click the option to create new. So now we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, back here, and we're going to erase everything, basically. So we've saved our workflow. Now we're going to create a new history. And so it's blanks out everything. And now we're going to go look for another gene. So there's a gene here, but you can, if you have your favorite gene that you know is there, you can look for your favorite gene. So how do we start there? So we get data. So let me, uh, okay. Uh, yes, so you're going to upload a file, but it would be, uh, so it would be a file of coordinates. Yeah. So you could have it in tab delineated format. Yeah. 
it would look like our the thing we got from the UCSC, right? Yeah, so it would be SNP coordinates or, yeah, so you could do it that way too. So, but now we're getting the data from UCSC, but if you did an experiment and you had your own file, then, yeah. So we're going to uh, go to UCSC main, and now I'm going to go look for a different gene name. I'm going to go look for the gene they tell me to look for, because I'm sort of that kind of per person. But uh, you want to look for your favorite gene, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to take the first one on the list because I don't like to complicate my life. And then I get output. Click once, send query to Galaxy, and away it goes. Then while it's getting it, I can I'm going to rename it. And this one's going to be called clock snips and I'm going to save there we go it's getting it's working it's getting its stuff and it's green I can look at it same file format as before if I click on it it's 59.9 lines and so forth but now I don't want to redo the same thing we did over again. Since we've kept our workflow, I'm going to click on the workflow tab and I'm going to get Flank's workflow, the workflow that you save to, whatever name you save to. So I'm going to run it. So you can edit the workflow. Yeah, and then you create it and modify it and, and do different things and c save it to a different name. Yeah. You'll see, we'll, we'll look at a very, con this workflow, uh, we'll look at this workflow later. Um, basically what I could do here, I could just run the workflow. And it's basically getting the um, intervals and it's getting the flanks getting the flanks getting the sequence without me because it just remembered the workflow because I just renamed it while so I'm gonna let it go right now so it's got three steps it's or one step I did by doing the lookup then it's doing the other two steps automatically so this is a very simple workflow you can remember how you did it you save it to a workflow, all the steps you did to, to do it, and then you give it a different data set, basically. So we did it on BRCA1 gene, and now then I looked up cl clock gene, and then I gave it the SNPs I found, and I gave, I'm processing it through. The first step I did manually, so that part of looking up something up, you know, I have to type it in, I have to go look at it, ascertain, but if it's something like uh, Joar was mentioning, if it's a file that you already have, then you can just run on that file again. You don't have to look up that file. You just feed it that file. You load up the file. So, and it's, it's here's my uh, third step. And it's, it's done the, the same thing again. So what we can do also is you can go back to workflow, look at the first workflow, and instead of saying run, I'm going to say edit. And it, what it does, it actually brings it up, and it's a very simple workflow, three steps. I can uh, click on every step, or it's two steps, getting, get uh, output data, get flanks, and, oops. Um, and then it's got all the, mo it's actually got the details of, of that workflow, so you can change it here too if you want to, and, and so forth. And right now, only the third, the last step, so you can move these things and you see the connections between them. Only the last step has this little thing highlighted, so it doesn't show you all the intermediate steps right now. But if I wanted to see if I'm debugging something or if there are intermediate steps which are quality controls or tests like that, then I would highlight those steps so that I would get also see that data. 
So you can either see every step of your workflow. It's assuming that you don't want to see it. You only want to see the last one. But if you do want to see it, you just click on it and it will say, it'll show you that, that step. So that'll be part of the output that it, it shows you that you can look at. So this was a really, really, really simple two-step workflow. Okay. Did everybody get that? <laughs> so in your, in your first workflow, you retrieve data and save that workflow. Yes. And when you call the workflow up again, it ignored that data. It ignored the, the, so the getting the data was not part of the workflow. You're right. Yes. So how do you make that part of the workflow? How do you know that? It seems a little bit unintuitive. Unintuitive to get the data. Uh, I guess getting, so the workflow works on a data set. And so the first step is either getting data, uploading data, starting on something. So which data do you want to do? So we got some data on which we sort of applied that. And if you, if you remember when I said save workflow, let me see if I can go back to that page. Uh, I'm going to say leaf page. Okay, uh, no, not this one. So what do I have here? Extract genome. Clock. No, it's not working. So, so actually, when I saved the workflow, it didn't have that first step as a step. It was basically it was those two other steps. It showed it to you as such. I can't go back. I mean, I have to run it again. I'll maybe later on if I have time. I'll, I'll run it again and show you. Okay, Emily. Like a hundredfold. A hundredfold, and try and repeat your RNA sequence analysis on your own in Galaxy. Which this is part two of module. So now let's now we're going to go into the cloud. And and for those of you, can you Don't. raise your hand again? If you could not get a Galaxy instance on the cloud. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, seven, that's a lot of people. Okay. So we have basically everybody's got to pair up. So we no we. So we shut down some instances. We freed up 14 volumes. Okay. So some more people can do. Should and, well, they should see. You you should be able to. They should see a get. Uh, if you see Galaxy with two panels, then you're good. If it doesn't work for you, we're, um, remember you can click, try and do it in the web browser. Right. No, we're not. We're not going to have. They're not going to be happy. Uh, pairing up is not happy either. Well, the thing is, it's going to, I mean, you're going to bug. So if we do that, so this is an example of on-kind use of, uh, of shared resources, which were not really meant for next-gen sequence analysis. Although, although, that said, the files we're working with are relatively small. So those of you, we could try. So those of you who uh, do not have the, and it's basically the same thing, who do not have the browser, the sort of the cloud version working, should uh, try. So it should be. So first thing to do over there on the cloud is to log in again. And since this is a new instance, you'll have to register because it doesn't know you. So did we, we did all this.
So you saw, so I showed you, so this is, oh, here, Ian. And actually, Emily is going to walk you through this, so I'm not going to do this. So this is the workflow that we're going to run. Are going to, we're actually going to create one of these workflow. You're going to create this workflow. So the, the pane here that I'm looking at is a small part. So this is the whole workflow here, right? And this box is just one part of the workflow. You have to move your box throughout. The, if you want to see the whole workflow. So this file for this workflow is on the wiki. So you can actually download it when you go home and run it on your own instance of Galaxy somewhere, on your home computer, on your server, at UPenn, on, on the cloud, whatever. So you have it. So you can do whatever. And so this is what it looks like. And basically, we're going to copy files, and we're going to we could run this workflow, but Emily is going to do it a better way. This is she's going to run some of the steps. So basically, after you've done that, just so I'm going to remind you, um, I'm just going to sort of a plug for another project that I, I know some of you may have heard about. It's called Genome Space. And Genome Space is actually, some of you did the uh, Pathway Workshop last week, and some of you may have done some other workshop. Genome Space is a workspace that brings together Cytoscape, Galaxy, uh, Gene Pattern, uh, Genomica, IGB, uh, InSilico DB, and UCSC Genome Browser. So all in one sort of workspace. Is this, it's another free tool from the folks at the Bro. They're trying to take over the world. And uh, they're, they're well on their way. On the Galaxy website, there's lots of videos on how to do things. I recommend you look at those. Um, don't forget your files. Try out Genome Space. Um, and then here I have links to the Galaxy project, Biostar, which is really sort of a nice sort of Q&A so people can ask questions about next-gen sequencing stuff. Uh, Open Helix, they have a really great blog, lots of uh, good Twitter, very active Twitter account, UCSC browser, also good uh, documentation. Seek Answer is another good place for questions on the technology, the lab, and, and the uh, bioinformatics of, of uh, things. Okay, so we are going to try to repro reproduce the labs that we have that we have done this morning. Uh, so for the RNA seq uh, analysis. Um, so basically, what we are going to do is that I'm going to guide you across uh, different first step on, to, on how to upload the data, um, how to to rename the data and um, how to start the analysis, but then you will be uh, on your own and trying to reproduce all the different steps of the, of the lab, so running top hat, cufflinks, cuff teeth. Um, and so, so as Francis said, all these different steps are available on the wiki, so you will have, if you want to, so later if you want to download the workflow, you can download it and then open it and uh, view it in uh, Galaxy. So you will have the complete workflow corresponding on all the, on all the different steps that you have seen, uh, uh, that you have done this morning. Um, so if you didn't do it yet, you have uh, to register. Um, because if you don't, you won't have access to um, you won't have access to different uh, um, features such as uh, renaming uh, histories or uh, opening workflows. So it's important to to register first. So is everyone registered into Galaxy or? Yeah. Okay. On the cloud, did you? Yeah, yeah. If you were usegalaxy.org, you registered, and now you're on the cloud version, it doesn't, it doesn't know that you, the other one existed. That it's totally separate from the rest of the world. Okay, so, yeah. So, so yeah, so the first step would be to create, uh, to create the history in which you would be working. So you can just rename uh, the history if your history is empty. 
or you can create a new history by uh, selecting this little like wheel here and create a new history and then so you can rename it by just clicking uh, on the name um, so here I'm just calling that module 5 and then you press return to to uh, save the name of the module so the other step uh, is going to uh, be to download uh, to upload all the files uh, that uh, on which we have worked this morning so what we have done is that for that to be a little bit uh, easier is that we have concatenated all the uh, normal and all the tumor uh, fast you file together and so you have the you will have the fast you file of the normal read one normal read two and the tumor uh, read one and tumor read two so you will have only like four four fast you files and two for each uh, two for normal two for tumor and so what we're going to do is that so we are going to uh, so yeah so you select uh, get data and then you click on upload file so now we're uploading so contrary to what we did this morning or this later in the last lab is we got the data from UCSC now we have data files and so we're going to upload these data files so the files that you want to upload uh, are on the lab, so you can just select all of the file, so all of the URL at the same time. And you can paste them into the URL text um, box here. I'm, not, I'm just using um, upload file, get data upload file. You can upload the file. Yeah, it's uh, it will uh, it will unzip them and it yeah. So that's not a problem. <laughs> so then you have so you can let everything by default except that here. Um, you will select the genome which will be AG19 so you can just write AG19 and select wow that's very and select so this one the AG19 genome and then you can click on execute Okay, so you get the green box in the middle, that's good. Now we may have another copy break. No. <laughs> Hopefully, oh, it's good, see? So we're all running separate instances now. We're all not going to the same place. So we're all running, it's basically the, the limiting factor is probably the bandwidth, the bandwidth between your laptop and there. It's not the actual processing there. So now the files are being downloaded. So what happened is that normally, um, Galaxy will be able to detect the format of the file, so it will um, know if it's a BAM file or a BAT file, and it will um, and an annotate them accordingly. But we are going to check that. Yeah. So is everyone okay? So the first step will be to rename the files because here, as you see, uh, Galaxy saves the entire uh, URL as a na file name, so that's not very easy to look at. So what we're going to do is that we're going to edit uh, all the different file names. So we're just clicking on the, on the pen icon to edit the att attributes, and you can like just delete the beginning of the URL like that. And you can check here, it has detected automatically the, the kind of uh, format. But if it's not the case, you can select the, the type of format and, uh, and save it as well. 
So you can do that for all, all of your file. <coughs> How can I scroll down? The number nine didn't work. Hit save. Uh, hit save. Yeah, yeah, I have to hit save, but I, can't, I don't have access to the save button, so. Oh, you have to, I mean, you have to scroll down. I'm not okay. sure. Okay, it's working. Now. Yeah. It's working now. Yeah, enter is working as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, here yeah, right you're there. right. So now you have all your files downloaded and renamed. Um, so we can start. So the first step with uh, Galaxy, when you want to analyze a FastCube file, is to use a, FastCube, a tool called FastCube Roamer. So what this tool does is that it uh, uses a standardized um, FastCube format, for, um, a quality score for the FastCube format. So you can download. Uh, to it, a uh, large variety of different kind of uh, quality scores. So if you have an old Illumina machine or if you have solid reads, that, um, that's not a problem. You just use fast your groomer and everything will be converted to a quality uh, score format that is uh, understandable by, uh, by Galaxy. So for doing that, we are going to... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you can search for tools. So, but for that, you have to select the show tool search in the parameters. And you can type groomer. Groomer. Okay. It will be this one. So you can run a uh, groomer on every of your FastQ files. So first you select the files on which you want to run a uh, groomer. And then you just click on execute. And you do that for all the first FastQ files that you have. Sanger, yeah. Well, it's, it, I think the last Illumina uh, sequencing machine uses Sanger score now. Yeah, for each file. Yeah, each file, Q file, yeah. So you have uh, normal, all read one, normal, all, all read two, tumor, all read one, and tumor, all read two. <coughs> Groomer uh, use a standardized uh, f uh, quality score format. 
Uh, it's it's um, so if you have let's say if you want to use solid data or Illumina data, uh, you don't you don't need like different um, different version of the same tool. Everything will be encoded in uh, this what you call single format, and then all the tools can be run on the same uh, format. On the lab, I think I've provided a, a link uh, on the Galaxy website that explains a bit more about this tool. Yeah. This is Illumina data, but the Sango is just a, it's just a way of encoding a quality score, and um, it's a way that um, Galaxy is choosing for analyzing for using all the tools. So it wants all the quality score to be under the same format. So that just is. Uh, no, I have to. Well, you have to run fast your groomer for time on every on every file. So you select it and uh, you select the file you want to run the. Yeah. Okay. And so to be sure that you have done the the right thing, um, my advice would be to rename. Uh, the files that you have created. So here you can see that it's a fastq uh, groomer on data1. So data1 is normal or read1.fastq. And you can check that. Uh, if you click on the little information icon, here you can see that what you have done exactly. So you can see that you have run uh, the groomer uh, on this particular file. And you can see exactly which type of parameter you have chosen for running the analysis. And so you can, what you can do is that you can uh, rename, rename the file to follow what you what you have done, and call it, for example, uh, I don't know, groomer, and then the name of the of the previous file. And you can do that for the full file to be sure that you will be using the right one when you will be doing the comparison of normal and, and human. Okay, so once you have finished, you will have finished this step. You will be able to to um, do so the labs that we have done this uh, this morning on uh, on this particular data set. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're starting yeah. in the RNS Seq lab. You're starting at step seven yeah. within the RNS Seq lab. So we're just starting by using a uh, top hat. Now the rest is up to you to replicate what we did this morning within Galaxy, beginning at step seven from where we did this morning. And I think it says. So when you are running Galaxy, a uh, top hat. It says alignment. So yeah, so think about using the groomer uh, tool, uh, the groomer fast queue, and not the one that, not the first one. So the the one that you have just created right now with the the, the right uh, um, quality score format, 
And also think about trying to rename. Uh, when, once you've finished a step, a step and you have a result, a file, try, think about renaming it so that you can keep track of what you have done uh, all along. Okay. I mean, once I done the Groover, these files then disappear from the drop down menu or they still stay there? You know when you had a drop down Oh down yeah, menu? so you can just erase what is written in it and, okay. and it will yeah, go like that. And now you can like for example search for top hat and you will have top hat. So when you were selecting files for the groomer, then you have the list of files that you imported. Yeah. Then they will disappear to when you run Groomer? No, 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 they're still, no, no. They're still, they're still, still there. there. Now, you can, now you can select from 13 different files. Well, so each time them. you add a new file, it doesn't know. But yeah, Galaxy is quite smart for that because once once you will try to, to load, for example, Top Hat, it will, for example, if you're looking for a FastQ file, it will only show you the FastQ file. And here you only see the Groomer file, so you won't be able to launch it on the other, so it, it shows that you need to do that as a first step for using Top Hat. It doesn't let you make all the mistakes. No. There's some. I'm just saying. Because if you have, like, working for years, then you will have multiple files. No, so one thing is that you have to create several histories, like, uh, for every analysis you are doing. So, it's, and you can uh, download the histories as well, so you can save what you have done. And load it back in again later, hmm? and then import the history. Yeah. And yeah, and import it in another instance as well. Once you have downloaded them and saved them, you can import it in a new instance if your instance is, I don't know, broken or. Thank you. That's what I was scared of. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can save. Thank you. 
So, so in this case, yeah, in this case, we use. Do you know if it's possible to get your own index in there? Yeah. Actually, it's, you don't need to have an index, you just provide the FASIO file and uh, then you have this creating the index on, uh, on this. I see. Select the reference genome. Okay, I didn't realize that those things popped down when you started that. Most of hats. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. So, yeah. because first we need to align the read to the to the genome, and then we will use the alignment for, with uh, cufflinks to re to reconstruct the transcripts. And so you return four files for insertion and deletion. Yeah. yeah, but you have to run top hat twice, so one on the normal and one on the on the tumor. Here, you choose use one from the history. Very speak up, so yeah, for so for top hat. Uh, several things to okay. 
Everybody, please pay attention. Important stuff here being spoken. <laughs> So yeah, so for top hats, uh, several important things. So if you want to reproduce what has been done this morning, so here uh, you have you will only select uh, chromosome 22 and not the entire reference genome because we have selected the reads only mapping to the um, chromosome 22. So you select um, use one from the history, and then here you will automatically uh, see the chromosome 22 that faster that we have downloaded. <laughs> you can you can cancel uh, every step that are not okay, like with a cross. You can build them. Then you can you can select paired end as well because you want to run it as a, in a paired end mode, and so you can select the normal, for example, read one, the normal read two, and then what is the mean in a distance between mate pairs? What was it? Remember that number? Yeah. I wasn't even here, I remember, <laughs> from last week, two weeks ago. So you can, you can execute that one and, and do exactly the same for the tumor. Yes, because it's a, it's a way of uh, checking the, uh, the, if the reads are, resp are respecting the, the distribution of the insert size. So, yeah. It sort of limits, it makes it faster to look for the, 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 the space to look for the, the pair down. So if there's nothing that matches there, then it'll go look somewhere else. What step did we plan to go to when starting to check in the uh, uh, here in the class? Yeah. I don't think we have to come to the show. So, what are we going to do? But everything is under a workflow that is. Uh, so, what I'd so like to do is maybe like it in like 20 minutes, just start to open up the workflow and sure? show them how to start to start things with the workflow. Yeah, that's what we're starting. But I don't know if it's still in the new version because we really are only an old one, like March uh, 20. Right, in the cloud, on the cloud, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's corrected. Oh, yeah, so you can do all the post processing, the cut, cut columns, the yeah. paste, paste table together. Yeah, you can do all of that. Yeah, yeah you can. I, got, I, I put everything in the, in the workflow, so that's why my workflow is so big because I have like 14 steps with all the cuts, paste. Those are a lot of little. Yeah. 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 So you can do all that. You have, you have all the Unix command in the. Yeah. 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 This trummer bun? No. Yeah. Then once you get to the R step, then it's like a command line. But you can, if you, if you can basically do stuff that's not in green, you can it. I just so if there's any R square, there's some cuts in whatever R code, any code. You have to be the work now on the tool. As soon as the tool is incomplete, it has access to input output, then you can be the work of the So, one thing as well, so if, if the top hat step is not finished, you can run cufflinks still because it will, it will know that the step is not finished yet and it will wait until the step is finished to run cufflinks. So you can run several te steps at a time to will just be waiting until the top hat is finished and then it will run cufflinks.
So yeah, except um, here we will use um, reference annotation as we have done in the in the latest one. Not for for this case, no. but you, you could if you if you were doing that by your by your own. It's just if you want to reproduce exactly uh, what we have done this morning, that we don't we don't see that. Yeah, yeah. So while even while they're queued yeah, up, yeah. we can do the two um, yeah. uh, accepted hits, and then the only things we we need to get the US uh, the UCSC gene. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's one of the files you upload. Yeah. You upload yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then there's nothing else we need, like max intron length and that stuff. Well, you could you, you could do that for your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for this one, we'll just leave it as the. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this morning I think we 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 chose a <laughs> parameter for the pair and reads. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Okay, so we should do it now. I I, I didn't I didn't do it, but uh, I don't think that's. Yeah. Okay. Leave it. Oh, you can, you can, yeah, so here, for example, um, if you select, 
This one I've renamed it, but um, here you can see that it's a BAM. It's a BAM format. If you click on the link. Oh, you don't have it because I renamed it, but it's it's accepted accepted hits BAM. Yeah. You think I should? Yeah, them? maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's the thing is, if they start the workflow, it's going to take. They won't be able to finish it. So, uh, but it'd be good for them to see it. I think. Mm -hmm. See how it feels. Yeah. So, has everyone finished a top hat yet? Is have someone having some issue with top hat? Is anybody listening? <laughs> Who's not finished top hat? Okay. Of those who are on. Uh, on use Galaxy. It's just one, two. Okay. Yeah, actually, if you explain the steps in the, in the pipeline, yeah. I think that's still a so, so once once you have run top hats, you will obtain uh, four diff um, yeah four different files. Uh, you'll see one that is called accepted hits.bam. So this is a BAM file uh, of just the mapping of the reads to the genome. You have the insertion, the so deletion, and the splice junction file, so which made four, four files by so four files for the tumor and four files for the normal. So once you have that, you can run cufflinks. And so cufflinks, the only thing uh, we have modified is that instead of uh, having no for use reference annotation, I've selected use reference annotation, and then should be like UCSC genes .gtf, which is a reference annotation for um, of UCSC, and you can uh, do that on the tumor and on the normal. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fine like that, yeah. Mm. So, when we asked it to use the reference annotation, it automatically detects that I only have one file that, that is of the right type. That's why the, you have to check as well the format of the, if the format of the files that you've downloaded have been uh, correctly uh, guessed by Galaxy, because it's a, it's a way it's, it's knowing uh, which file uh, format it corresponds to. So if, if I didn't have that file loaded in already, would I have a chance to load it in now? Uh, yeah, you can. You could also create it using UCSC tables. So, like this one. Oh, this one. And you you can create uh, the file right here.
Do you have the work or yeah. should I have done with it? Um, Maybe I would do it. Yeah, because I don't think I have it in this instance. Okay. Yeah. I have it in this instance. I don't have it. So if you want to... So if okay, you want this, to have a look... important part here. Everybody. So what we're going to do is that we are going to open the uh, workflows that I have created uh, with all the different steps that you that, that you've been doing so yeah. far painfully. So 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 all the steps that you have been doing this morning as well. So I've created a workflow with all of these steps, so you you will be able to reproduce all of these steps uh, like that. So I'm going to show you how to open it in uh, in Galaxy. So you go to the top panel here, and you can see you have different. Um, possibilities and so one that interests us is a uh, workflow so you click on workflow so yeah everyone's okay with that so now um, you can download the workflow from the but wiki can download it to maybe uh, can you get it from the wiki or no, I think you have to download, to download it from the wiki. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go back, yes. So, so that's on the this wiki, one. Yeah, so you, you have to save it to your computer. It's a small file. Save it to your computer, and then we're going to upload it to Galaxy. Well, I'm sure you can upload it directly from the URL. But uh, anyway, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Save link yeah, as put it on the desktop. Or CPLU. So everyone has found the file. Yeah. So now you can <coughs> upload it. So it's a button on the top right side. In upload or import workflow. And you click on choose file here. So you select the file, so the extension of the file is GA. And then you can s click on import. And now you should see that. So you want, you want to see that? And if you click on the, on the module name, you will have different kind of options. Um, so you can see that you can like download, share, um, you can like rename the lot of different things but what will interest us here it's click on edit so if you look at the bottom you will see a little window here that show you the real size of the workflow and you can grab the square and go in to look at it And if you look at it, like basically the beginning is really uh, so 
what the step that we have done right now. So importing the file um, using FastQ Groomer, then uh, using Top Hat. Here I've added as well a quality control uh, on the reads using FastQ. And uh, then you have their cufflinks. So you can, you can kind of look at it like that. And you can access the parameters. When you select, so you click on a box, and then you can see on the side uh, all the parameters that uh, uh, have been selected for this workflow. So you can see that yeah, we have selected the, already the, the, dis the distance so that you will have to, to change it if you want to run it on another data set. But, and you have the same for cufflinks. So yeah, this workflow is quite uh, large because so what we have done is that we have started so by top hats and we have cufflinks. Then we've run curvedif, and then we are doing uh, some like cut and uh, select paste and uh, different kind of Unix command that you are also that you can also do in um, in Galaxy. So that's what I've added here. So you can cut a different kind of columns like that, and and you can reproduce exactly the same things that we have done when we have passed the curvedif and the curvedif result to look at different kind of data. So yeah. Um, okay, so th this code for the paper is really interesting. Uh, can one copy and paste that to the field as normal, or do we need to do it again? Oh, the, yeah, so th for, this, for this, I've done an entire workflow for everything tumor and almost have two, I have two sides if you look here. At so, so at the beginning, so one side will be, um, oops, so one side will be uh, the, um, the normal. Should I have written this somewhere? Yeah, so this one is the is the normal top part for normal. So I've and you can also add some step to rename the, the file. So, so that's what I've done here. So if you click on the top hat box, you'll see the top hat parameters, and then at the end, you see that edit step actions. I've also what I've done is that I've I've created uh, another step that does um, a, that rename automatically the the files once I've been created, so that you don't have um, Galaxy One Extra like you that you had, but you uh, rename the file with the files that you with the file names that you are that you will be sure to recognize once it has been created. Can one, can one, for example, make a workflow that one runs on every output? Can yeah, sure. You can, yeah, 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 sure, you can do that. This is done on all the outputs. Mm. Um, yeah, I think the best way of doing that would, would have been not what I've done here, but like um, sep separating the uh, workflow in, uh, in different, like doing, like for example, three different workflow. One workflow um, aligning, or maybe, I don't know, for example, uh, cufflinks. And that you can repeat several times on the different samples. Then one more flow, cuff diff, to compare two, two results of this uh, previous workflow. And then the last workflow, like for example, for doing post processing. So in this case, I put everything under the same for you to download it. But that's, that, yeah, this would be a better way because then you will be able to reuse uh, the, 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 the workflow block on different, on different data sets. So. <coughs> This renaming step, that's something that you've done separately. I mean, Galaxy wasn't um, it didn't record the fact that you've renamed things. It did. And Check your workflow for what you did. Yeah, because I, I didn't rename them. Okay. So, but if I, if I rename mine, it would actually record that. No, I don't think so. That's in the. Yeah, yeah but, but the once, once you're saving your. So, once you're uh, export. Ex like, extracting a workflow from a history, yeah. then you can uh, select the different boxes and add the, re the rename uh, okay, so step to all of them. Mm. Yeah. Why can't they keep the same name, let's say from one file you, when you're running top hat, they should keep the same name and just add a top hat to it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but that's, well, I guess it's, it's maybe it's a way of, yeah, I don't know. But that's so maybe Francis be can email them. 
Or you can eat dumplings. Birdies. That would make sense. Birdie, birdie an operation. So that would make it too easy, right? No, no, but, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't make sense because you're running an operation on multiple data sets. But it would be a different name. Yeah, but if it was one thing you were taking and doing something, then you could rename it not that X. But if it's X Y Z you're doing it on, then it's you can only take the name off. That, that's what. They won't put X Y Z. Okay. Yes. So I mean, this, to me, this looks like a great interface, and I, I also like a lot. I want to use it. So when should I use it? Uh -huh. that's a very good question. Oh, so yeah, that's. Well, if there is such a thing. There, 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 are, there are obviously thing. some issues with using uh, Galaxy. So one of them is that, um, so, so one of them is that you can't, for example, if you run it on a cluster, on your own machine. Uh, then you're limited by your own machine, so that, that's one issue. If you run it on the cloud, that's the same. So you have like, you have to ask for a big instance. So you see today we have selected a, a large instance so that can this can. Off. But if, for example, if you run it on the clus on a cluster as we are doing at the OSCR, the problem is that we can't select the number of processor on which we want to we want to launch uh, the jobs so it's a it's a unique choice that we that we will do but um, so we can't we can't choose that in the parameter so i think they will work on that but for the moment so for, for different steps to run on one processor versus 100 processors yeah. so to, to adjust that on a per processor i see you have to use you have to pre-select up front right. that i want 100 processors right. and even though you may need one or two for certain steps it blocks 100 for you. And the other thing is that so uh, you have so now I think it's ki they kind of have found a way to do that. But um, for tracking the version of the tools that you are using, sometimes it's kind of difficult. Like you before, you couldn't have, for example, two versions of Top Hat. For example, you wanted to try the new one that is just like that have been just um, published. So you would have to use the, the one that is uh, under Galaxy, except if you know how to to modify Galaxy for like. Importing your own version. So yeah, so the issue is not tracking the version numbers; it's tracking multiple versions yeah. of the same tool. But I think now they kind of because now with they have so top, they have top at two in the in the main instance of uh, right. Galaxy. Right. So. Unless you install everything yourself and wrap up the tools yourself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, we have we have done that several. Uh, like we have used a lot of tool shed in uh, OSR for importing the tools that we're interested in, and uh, yeah, but you can you can do a, a wrapper around the tool you're interested in, and it's like if it has an input and a, just it's a simple program, it has an input and an output, and you can uh, do like kind of different parameters such as top hat and cuff things, and you can do wrapper around it. And, and add it in, uh, in Galaxy. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question about the, the scalability? So, in Top Hat, there's a there's a parameter for the number of nodes to run. No, you you can't under Galaxy. You can't specify how many nodes you want to run right now. Right. Yeah, is it still under development? So may change. No. So. You have to choose a value by default. Yeah. Is it possible that the Galaxy can um, use words and ensure that generate the code from this uh, workflow? I mean, is that something? I mean, we can generate the code. Did you ask Galaxy to do that? Yeah. I, well, once you have. So yeah, so you can download the uh, the workflow and look at uh, how how the file looks like. Yeah, but it's not a script. It's, it's it's only like a way like which tool will be run with which parameters. Mm.
I'm not. I'm not sure. Do you do you know what's happening? Oops. How can we know which uh, version of the tool has been run by? Uh, Some tool. Like, for example, take that. Uh. I don't know. Some some tools give you the information. Some tools don't. Oh yeah, here, right here. Nice tool version. Yeah. yeah. But this is a very like this is not a newest instance. So that's uh, this instance is from March two thousand eleven. What about the standard error and standard output of top end? What it gives is that when everything is running okay, you don't have that. But when is there is a bug, and the window turn red, and you can uh, click on the, you have a little like a bug that uh, icon you can click on, and then you will display all the information about what went wrong and what was the error file. So they must be there. It's just they're not readily accessible. Mm. If everything is okay, Galaxy display the result. If there's an error, Galaxy display the standard error inside of the result. Mm. Can, can anybody comment on differences between Galaxy and Seekware and where using one more appropriate? Because we use both. Seekware is just like command line. Mm -hmm. Combo all the command line. So you have to build a um, like every time you have a tool that you want to add in SQL, you have to like build a, a file like an XML file describing the actions that your program is, uh, is doing. But the thing with SQL is that it's um, is kind of following what is happening on the cluster. So it's following if the, the job status, mm -hmm. if it's if that if if your if your the job that you have launched is finished or if it's is mm -hmm. everything run like okay. And you can, yeah, maybe you can, but it's, it's everything is with uh, command lines and you have to, to write XML. command line. Yeah. There's no GUI interface. Okay. So, so, so what is it doing for you? It's helping you building a workflow. Like, for example, if you want to use top files and cufflinks and, uh, I don't know, cuffdiff, you can tell uh, SQL, first I want to run this tool with these files. Once I have the result, I want okay. to launch that here. And it's checking that every step is finished. And and that the that the result file is what was expected. So yeah. And Sikora also maintain the job submitting the cluster. Mm. Job submitting, job monitoring, all those stuff. Does Sikora take care of um, paths for you? So for instance, can I can, can if I have a set of files and those files for some reason get moved. I I think uh, maintain their own database. You you cannot I don't think Sigbar allow you to delete files. Right now you don't have permission to delete files generated by Sigbar. You cannot move you cannot move them. They have their own database, meta database to track all your files. Michelle. Oh, sure. And so you can do, so you have several options. So one is uh, downloading. Well, where is my, just like to scroll down. Oh, yeah, okay. So first option, you can download the file. So just, you just click on the save here. So you download the data set and you can download the index as well. So the index has been created at the same time. Or you can use uh, the UCSC uh, Genome Browser for visualizing your results, or you can use the Ensemble Genome Browser. You have a link for starting uh, IGV, but sometimes it doesn't work. But um, And another way is using their own system of uh, visualization, which is called Trackster, so which is right here.
So here, after that, you you, you can look at the uh, you can look at the at the data, and it's kind of working the same way as a uh, UCSC Genome Browser because you can add uh, you can add tracks. So, for example, if you are visualizing right now the, the BAM file and you, are, you want also to see the junctions or the insertions file, um, you can add tracks and select the ones that you want to visualize at the same time. Like that. So, for example, you want to see the tumor and the normal, then you can select both. And well, I've already loaded the tumor, so I'm not loading it again. But And if you want to see for example, uh, the splice junctions for both. You can select them as well. So the good thing is that it sh should be fast because it's um, it's using the, f the directly the files that are on the. Yeah. So now it's loading. So it's another way of looking uh, at your data. So, has you one of the questions? Or? Are you thinking about something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you have like some, if you're waiting for something to happen and you have a few minutes, do the survey. <laughs> On top of the wiki page. Yeah. I, won't, I won't allow you to leave until you do the survey. <laughs> you have to tell me where the last word, the last question is in the survey. You know, if you get it right, I'll let you leave. Can, can you speak up? Because I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Under Galaxy? So please, please don't do that. But if <laughs> if you select run, but don't do that, please, because it will maybe ask a bit like don't like uh, run it. You can look at it, but don't run it. Uh, but once you click on run uh, on the on the workflow, you can you can see how it looks like. So globally, it's, it's uh, it makes you choose the different files that you want to to use. Yeah. And so at every step, you can scroll down and you can see. And so what I've done is that I've put annotation on uh, my on the on the workflow I've created, so that every time I, I know what I want to have in this uh, uh, disposition. So here, for example, as an annotation, I've had normal or all read to that fast queue. So now when I'm when I'm looking at the workflow and I want to launch it, I know that I want this file at this position. But so, and you can scroll and and look at the different. Uh, at a different uh, step like that, and every time you have a, um, a choice of um, inputs, and you can select the inputs that you want, and if the steps are just internal steps that don't don't need any other kind of data, then it's just you you don't have any things to select. So I don't know how to. Oh yeah, like that. So like for example. So here you can see all the different steps, and yeah. So as I've selected all the all the steps already for all these steps here, you don't have anything to to select. <coughs> so.
So this is for the workflow. And if, for example, you want um, you want to to use only a part of the workflow, you can clone it. So and and work on the clone and delete all the step you are not interested in, for example. So, I don't know, if, for example, you don't want to do the fast QC, then you just, you just delete it. So. Yeah? Yeah. Like, for example, so I'm going to maybe to add a, a step here. Let's say I want to filter um, top hat results before um, running cufflinks, so I want to select only the reads that are for which both pairs are, are mapped. So I want to remove all the reads for which only one pair is mapped. So you can do, you can add a step. So this tool is called black stat, for example. So here you have this new little box. No, that's not black stat. I'm doing a mistake. It's some tools. the name of the tool already. Oh yeah. So it's filter sum. Sorry about that. So it's filter sum. And you can use for example here you want to filter the BAM file. So you take the like the BAM file is here. So you take the arrow here and you just move it here into the box you want to, to use. And same thing on the other side. And you go back to cufflinks. And then you have a new step. And you can del delete this one. But this is more tricky because there are a lot of things here. Yeah. So now you have a new step. And you can, can select the... You can select the parameters like that. And then the next time you will be running the workflow, you will have this new, st new step added to it. It depends. Uh, so, if you you can run your own instance of Galaxy on your own laptop, and then it depends on your computer. Uh, but you can run Galaxy on the main website that you went to. But this is quite slow. So, well, it depends on, on the type of data you're analyzing. If it's a really big, uh, like a really, you have, a, for example, you're analyzing a fast queue file with a lot of reads. Uh, then it might be really too slow, and you have also a limit of uh, um, uploading data to the main uh, Galaxy websites. So you won't be able to open. I think you won't be able to upload to to their website uh, a file, a, a too big file. I don't know which which is the limit. Maybe one one gigabyte or something like that no, for the web. I think it might be ten gigs. On the main website, main Galaxy website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. How limit? They, they used to have no limits, but then people started yeah, uploading yeah. fast few files. <laughs> so they have limits now. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's sort of, we talked a bit about that at the beginning of the workshop, and that if you have large data sets and you don't have a compute farm in your own institute, then you have to consider like Amazon, or there are other sort of cloud services. You search you know, Google for like free cloud. There are other ones which are free. But they don't have, you may not find Galaxy on there, so you then you have to upload Galaxy, so it becomes sort of an administrative nightmare. And they don't have, so we did a little finicky stuff, a little bit, you know, getting Galaxy running and stuff like that. They don't have any of those tools, basically, a user interface to get an instance running on the cloud. So it's a, it's a bit of, um, it's relatively new, so not, you know, it's, it's, it's in a lot of places are, are, are developing, in, are making it in development. There is a, um, for tools, and one of the, if you, you're looking at this, the same way we look for Galaxy on the, you know, community AMIs, there's a bio, I should mention that, there's a bio, cloud bio Linux, which has 
It's a Linux, but with all the bioinformatics tools already preloaded. And so that's a useful one to, to that has most of the tools, mostly up to date and so forth. So the same way, just search for BioLinux and you'll find that one. Um, so, but that's on Amazon, and it, I think it might be, so if you search for the BioLinux website, they may tell you where else you can get their, their instances. Uh, so, but they make it available for you to search, you know, to make it on different places. So it's, a, I mean, it, at this point, at the high computing end, it's either you build it, and you have it in-house, or you go and buy it somewhere. Either way, it costs. So it's, uh, I think the, 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 the sort of the, the, the concept that all of this is free is not true. It's a, it costs something, somebody, somewhere. There are salaries involved in maintaining these resources. There are salaries involved in, in so I mean, for Amazon, their, one of their biggest costs is cooling. So electricity for cooling, and so, uh, so the when you cost out how much it costs to you know do a transcriptome or do a, a whole genome or, or, or you know whatever, it's sort of not that dissimilar. The, the markup and the, the prices that Amazon charges is not very different than what it would cost you if you had for one year enough jobs to fill up a whole computer cluster and the cost of the clusters and the cost of the employees. They're not very different. Except that if most people don't have jobs for a whole year for a whole cluster all into themselves. And then it becomes a shared resource, and then it becomes a sort of measure of, of, the, of the sort of various costs that are involved. So universities, maybe they have a shared infrastructure. Um, uh, Compute Canada has a lot of various you know, shared clusters across Canada. I was in Ontario, with BC, the Maritimes, Areas and so forth, so in Quebec as well. So there are lots of compute uh, infrastructure. The nice thing about this one is that it's there's a lot of people. The whole Galaxy staff is like about 15, 20 people. A fraction of which is making sure that the cloud, you know, the, the Galaxy version works in the cloud. And um, so the software is free, but the time, you know, so basically they get money, they get grants, and so forth to, 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 to make it happen. But then you have to spend Amazon dollars. I mean, so it's a, uh, and I don't know how much, you know, how much would it cost to do a full transcriptome? It'd be thousands of dollars. It wouldn't be tens of thousands. But that's the order, I think. But this week, these two days, so the whole class, we probably spent about four or five thousand. But we did part of chromosome twenty-two, uh, <laughs> and we tried and some mistakes, and we tried again and, and so forth. But this is just give you an order of magnitude. So we spent so the one week workshop that we did a couple of weeks ago for um, cancer genomics where we use the cloud for maybe two of the four or the five days. So we used, heavily used it for a couple of days, and we spent $4,000 on that one. So I'm, and here I think we actually use it a bit more, so I'm guessing we'd probably use four or 5000 And the grant is for 5000 so we're okay. <laughs> Just. 